Good morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick. And I'm Joel Alconin. Welcome to Pre-Market Info. Market bounces yesterday off of our area. A little bit too soon for me, though. I was hoping to get down to the 1492 area, 1490, 1492. Joel was a bit higher. He was saying 1494. Got to 1495, so somebody's stepping in front of our levels there, Joel. Yeah, they looked at the old four star at fourteen ninety four fifty. The computers, and, uh, the high you know. frequency traders are on pre market info looking at those four stars and they're stepping in front of our four star levels. Yeah, and um also we also uh ninety seven was a target on the day going with those average average daily ranges. Uh but you know, that's in the past. We gotta look at what's going on today and what's going on today is uh we are approaching uh yesterday's high, the yep. blowback side that is at fourteen oh nine seventy five. So we are opening up into resistance. Uh for Kevin out there like me who follows the fifty percent retracements, uh from our break from 1530 to 1495, uh, 151250 uh, will be the next uh, area of control in this booze. Yeah, market. I liked I liked what I saw yesterday when this market turned around, bounced off the support area that I had found support in before. Obviously, like I said, I would like to get a bit lower so I could have picked up some uh, longs there. Uh, but regardless, it did bounce off of that area. Today's key. I mean, if the stock, if the stocks can, if the overall market here can start getting above 15, 10, 15, 12, maybe we can continue this rally here. I mean, everybody is still underinvested. It was a good bounce back day for the market, and I'm definitely uh, starting to fall a little bit back into the bullish camp here again. Although I don't yeah, know if I, I like was ever see, out. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see what happens. In the, I mean, we still have it over an hour before the market opens, but you know, let's like to see what happens. It's still at this 1509.50, 1510 level. If we can get and hold that, I think we can continue the rebound. But uh, this just might this just be a nice place, you know, to dump some stocks of people that were buying them on weakness, you know, for the one or two day trade. Hewlett Packard helping the market here last night, reporting earnings of 82 cents versus 71, increasing the full year guidance 340 to 360. Estimates were down at 336. Stock got a serious lift off that, obviously, trading up over the 18 handle for quite a while there last night. This morning it is giving some of it back, but we're still up pretty good. 1779, so we're up 69 cents here on Hewlett Packard. Uh, got to 1843 in the pre-market after the uh, after the initial announcement, and now just kind of drifting lower here. People are waking up, smelling the coffee here, realizing you know they still sell PCs and uh, <laughs> printers and, and printers. But let's go to the daily. I mean, and let's take a look at this stock. Def yeah, it's March. It's took out some major resistance we had here at 1745. Let's go a little bit longer term out. And look at this $18 level. Um, had a couple highs uh, back in July and August before the big crapola at uh, 1846 to 1856. We're just shy of that in the pre-market. Um, that's going to be your major area of resistance. I imagine there's going to be some stock uh, left over to sell at 18 off the open. So let's look at 18 and then that 1840 level. Coming back on the downside, you see the slow drift here. Uh, we've had a low recently at 1767. So after that, there's not much, not, uh, much. not much underneath that. AIG also reported earnings last night. Stock flying last night, flying again here this morning. Announced a profit. They're supposed to announce a loss, 20 cents. Estimates were down uh, to lose 8 cents. So surprise profit out of there for AIG. Looking good here, obviously. Uh, it was a little bit higher this morning. Traded over 39 bucks, but still finding good support here this morning. This 3860 area, which puts it up a buck 30. 3930 is what it hit in the pre-market. When I was going over the news on this, they, you know, they gave it, they gave the news, but it said may not compare. So oh, yeah. I don't know what that, I don't know what the hell that means. But anyways, after because they had some uh, write-offs and stuff, so they actually did lose. But uh, when you take out the one-time charges, I think that's where uh, they're coming up with it, the with the beat. That's okay. what the numbers are. Can you uh, bring up the daily too there? Yeah. Surely. Okay. Uh, Stock is after hitting a thirty-nine, uh, ninety, don't call me close to that forty-dollar level, uh, it sold off. You know, had a nice sell-off, getting a rebound now. Uh, uh, we did hit this area here between thirty-nine twenty-six and thirty-nine thirty-one. Got up there in the pre-market, uh, pretty much near the highs of the move. 
that's going to be your areas again of uh, major resistance probably a nice round number like 39 probably has a couple million for sale there uh, going back to the uh, to the overnight chart here once again that 39 levels confirmed by the high hanging out here at 3860 I think if I'm playing this off the open breaks below 3860 uh, yeah, let's look at this. In this 39 area, like all the whole 39 handle, it's hard to really cite specifically where the resistance is because there's so many tops in the 39s. You're up at 39.65, 39.18, 39.90 is where we got to is the highest. So all through the 39 handle, you were littered re with resistance. Uh, where that starts what probably... What do you mean it's hard to tell? There's there's a double top. It's uh, actually a triple top from 39.18 to 39.31. So is that so where you're citing? Yeah. You're just looking at those. You're just going to look right there at that 39.18 yeah, to 39.30. Yeah, and plus it will be up, uh, you know, almost two bucks on the day if it gets to that level. I, I, think, I, I think. One more bet. One more bet for the weekend. I, I'd say it doesn't get back up to 39.30 today. I'm telling you there's resistance there, too. I'm agreeing with you. I'm just saying it's hard <laughs> to cite it there. So I'm not going to say the, the damn thing's going up. I think it's going down, too. But I think you're going to find resistance somewhere in the 39s. I just don't know where. I can't say this decimal world. It's so hard to pick your actual <laughs> sense here. So we're I'm trying to give you a range of where it's overall resistance. So, okay, you know, the way I'm I sorry, sometimes man. play these I'm things, sorry. too. When I can't get a specific number, if you're Joel, you got the specific number there. You can throw out your short 39.25, be <laughs> okay. But with me, I don't know exactly, and this is my own opinion, I don't know exactly where the resistance is. So as this thing starts approaching 39, I start layering orders out there if I'm going to short the thing. If it starts taking out 40 bucks, then if the trade doesn't work and I get the hell out. But, I mean, that's really where the bogey is. This thing's $40, absolutely enormous. So you got 38.60, 38.75. If you wanted to try starting to short it here, I mean, you, you got to give it some, though. That's I don't like giving a trade 50 60 70 cents so right. that's why i think you might be a little bit early here but if you're willing to take you know that kind of risk yeah the thing could end up starting it's starting to look weak here even in the pre-market a and f reported too and talk about a stock that has turned around they reported awesome earnings 215 against the buck 96 the revenue beat too uh they raised the quarterly dividends they did a lot of things right but they also lowered full-year guidance, and I think that's where the stock, now they're digesting some of this, and they're not loving it. Stock, believe it or not, was trading up over 52 bucks here this morning. It has now reversed course. It is trading down 50 cents right now, 48.50, so a key reversal here for Abercrombie and & Fitch, and it's amazing when you look out to the daily charts, too, because multiple highs in the 52, low 52s, and that's where it got to hit those numbers, and now they're rocking it. Yeah, they said something. I mean, we were scouring uh, the tape for news and couldn't see much of that vicious sell-off here. Over in the, the last 15, 10 minutes, yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. but uh, what it did in the pre-market here uh, was uh, made a low of 46.40. Uh, we were on the show prepping for that, and uh, we were trying to find some support here, and uh, we did find a level back here back in on uh, January 10th, this hit uh, 46.61. Uh, so I think, once again, if you come back down to that area, that's going to be support. Uh, since you've hit that 46.40 level, um, you've got a rebound this high, almost up to 49.50. Uh, so I'd be using that as minor resistance. Texas Instruments are raising their quarterly dividend up to 28 cents. They're increasing their stock buyback. This was announced last night. Stock immediately started to lift when that happened. News algorithms go to work, start buying everything up to 33 bucks. Now it is drifting higher here in the pre-market, trading up at 33.30, so a nice 2.5% rise in Texas Instruments. Yeah, I was just going to, before I pulled this stock up, I was going to say, where is it trading at, 30 or 31? Uh, but actually, it's, it's a little bit a little higher, higher than that. Yeah, little pop here. Hit 33, 32 in the pre-market. Uh, taking a look at the dailies in this stock. 34. Uh, have, yeah, 34 looks big. We had a big sell-off uh, over the last couple days from 34. It took us down under 32 and a half. So good time to announce that. But uh, looking at yesterday's high, 33, I would use that as a swing number here. If I'm shortening it off the open and comes back down to that 33 level, I would use that as support. And uh 
boy, the on the upside here, it looks pretty it's sparse in between. Yeah, 33 and 34. So they must have sold a few calculators. Yeah, they looked like they sold a few calculators. Up to 34, though, that is major resistance if you ever saw it. So I've reiterated that number three, four times here, so you know what I think about that. Morgan Stanley upgraded at HSBC. What a wild ride for the financials yesterday. They were all down big. They were basically your big losers on the day. They turned around and started rallying, and they are continuing to rally here this morning. The entire financial sector is trading up. Morgan Stanley leading the charge with, with an upgrade at HSBC. 23.22 is where it's trading right now after closing at 22.83. So big lift here for the financials. Yeah, let's take a look at where this uh, potentially could be opening into. It could be opening right into yesterday's high at 23.22. So that is going to be resistance. A uh, little gap to fill up there to 23.35. So if you're playing this off the hop, uh, you really want to see a follow through here uh, from the 23.22 level. Uh, looking at the pre-market activity with just kind of stalled here at 23 and a quarter so got a good setup in Morgan Stanley off the open uh, a couple other ones Goldman Sachs might as well highlight a few of these because these financials are up big bring up the GS chart 158.88 is where it closed now trading up at 152.99 the stock is just uh Having a great morning here, too. But yesterday, again, a key reversal. We got down, just snuck below 150. So anybody was stopped out by below 150, got down to 149.80, and then turned around, started rallying, and the rally continues here this morning. Same story with all these financials. Yeah, gap down as well. Uh, yesterday's high, got another buck to get there in this issue, uh, one 153.95. So we will use that um, uh as major resistance. Um, Leo just had a questions uh, about the financials here. Any are they the first to take a a, a dump uh, from here? I mean, is this just a one day thing, or do you think it's going to continue with the financials? Well, the financials have been the leader in 2013. Like obviously, back even since November, the financials turned around, led this market out. The market before that was led by Apple. Apple handed the reins over to the financials. The financials have been the stocks that have been running for the last three months here. So they're your leader. And, and you can see what happens yesterday. The financials all of a sudden look weak, and the market continues to be weak. Here the financials are strong this morning. The market is strong. The financials are leading this overall market. Um, and yeah, I, I definitely think if you, if uh, the financials start to show weakness, this market's going to follow suit. But they're bouncing back here. These things were under-owned. You know, a lot of the run caught a lot of people by surprise. So people are buying bottom picking and that's why you see these uh, bounces happen so quickly because people are like okay Goldman Sachs was just at 159 I can buy it at 150 151 I'm going to do that I'm in the position now and, and you know and it continues to bounce higher so I'd love to see the rally continue in these things and these things deserve to uh, turn around and uh, make new highs but you know look at that Citigroup chart the 44 and a half area that was looking pretty toppy there uh, four or five six highs in a row there and all of a sudden turns around bounces off 42 number now you kind of sitting in the middle here this morning with Citigroup trading at 42.88. So just looking at that chart, it's kind of in the middle. We get up in the 44s, yeah, you can find these, resistance. These rebounds that happen, you know, after a, a big sell-off, and then, you know, you get, uh, you know, an exaggerated move in the spoos overnight, uh, you know, eight points, a pretty good move. You get the bounce. I mean, it's you really need immediate follow-through on those things because there's not, a, you know, they're just – they're just getting marked up because of the spoos. So I, I really think that it's going to be critical for the finance as well as the rest of the market is that, you know, take this out of the gate, take this 1509 level, obliterate it, and, you know, start hanging out around 1511, 1512, or else I think this is just a pump and dump uh, for the market and the financials. Well, it could be a dead cap bounce just off that support level that we talked about, the 1495 yesterday. So it just bounces up, gives a 14, 15 point bounce, and slowly starts drifting back, retest it again. Um, obviously, that's why today is a key day. We want to see it follow through and continue to rally, close strong on the day, and then you know we can make a charge to new highs there next week. But if we all of a sudden you know start selling this open and then people are using this opportunity to lighten up and take some of their gains that they've had, then different story. A um, couple other upgrades might as well highlight. Caterpillar upgraded at Raymond James. Stocks trading up over a buck here this morning. Cat is doing well here. <laughs> Wow, not after the last couple of days. Look at, yeah, and there's this yeah. thing, thing, risk on, risk off, and it was a risk off day, and wow, that's some volatility there. And Cat went through that 95 support, and boom, 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 two days, it's almost back at 90. So it is getting some of this back today, but 
93. Uh, well, someone's looking at this 93 level Looks here. Like it. And, yeah, it uh, had a couple tops here in the pre-market. I mean, you can you can look at the daily chart here. You've had us just uh, fallen off a cliff here since uh, sniffing the $100 level, 99.70. I uh, hit a low yesterday in the 90 handle, 90.57. Crazy uh, move. Just looking at yesterday's high, 92.79. Uh, previous day's low at 93.05, hit 93 in the pre-market. Uh, I'd like that's look, looking like major resistance here to me. I mean, this is just a Raymond James giving a little upgrade here. Um, that's a pretty steep trend to be turning around just on one upgrade. It could be uh, one of those situations where an upgrade could help some of these people who were yeah, long yeah, the bounce. stock. Yeah, getting, you know, uh, and, and this might be one of those bounces where, like, the chart looks broken. When you look at that daily chart, I'm just looking at it, it's like, ooh, man, that does not look good. Um, you've now getting back over half the losses from yesterday from the 95 handle. So if you bought this thing picking a bottom at 95, it just went down to 90 and a change on you. Now it's up at 93. You might be like, oh, maybe I should lighten up here, or, you know, eat some of my losses because it was they were a lot worse yesterday morning. So, and then you start approaching if this thing was to ever get back over the 95 handle. I think there's resistance all over the place. So, if I was long the stock, I'd probably think about lighting up, and I'd probably be looking if it went a little higher than this. That might not be a bad opportunity to possibly initiate a short position. Home Depot too. Talk about a bad couple of days. Bring up the chart on this thing. It's it's another situation. Oppenheimer's upgrading it this morning, so it is getting a bounce. But bang, bang, two days we go from basically 68 down to 64 and change. That's a huge move. Um, stock obviously lifting with the Oppenheimer upgrade to 65.24. This thing gets up to 66, a high 65s. I think you got sellers all over the place too. Yeah, you did. I uh, did find major support here at. The sixty-four dollar level. We had a sixty-four oh four low. Uh, yeah, um, going back uh, January seventeenth. Couldn't quite get that low yesterday. Sixty-four twenty-nine. Uh, there were some bad housing numbers, I believe, released over the last couple of days. Um, let's just take a look at where someone's deciding to sell this thing in the pre-market here. Just creeping up. Really, no major resistance yet. Sixty-five twenty-four has been the high. It's currently where we're trading. Uh, I guess you just have to use, go to the daily and use that 66 number. Actually, yesterday's high was 65.92. But if you did not get a media follow through up to that area, I just think this is uh, just another uh, another case of a you know an upgrade providing a minor lift in the stock and uh, sellers taking advantage. I of think it. so. I think so too. Uh, let's look at Google because uh, uh, it did get up there yesterday again into the 800 area. Gets up there and boom, they knock it right back down. Can we see yesterday? Yesterday's chart, I'm not sure if you can bring that up or not, but because um, we got the double top we talked about the day before. It got up to 8.05 yesterday. You can see right there off the bat. And then it just got into resistance again, and boom, they knocked 13 points off the stock. So had an upgrade yesterday, which gave it an initial lift, and then boom, they knocked it back down. It's lifting with the overall market here back into the 800s again, but this is going to be the fourth time it's trading over 800 here. Uh, can it continue to hold, or does it you know, give it back again? Is it is it deja vu all over again here with uh, the analysts? A couple analysts come out, Bob, you know, beating the drum, saying it was going to a thousand yesterday. I believe uh, a couple analysts hopped on that bandwagon. Uh, will eight hundred be like the seven hundred in Apple, where everyone is just upgrading it? I mean, at this point, uh, you would like to see some closes over the eight hundred dollar level. Uh, you've had um, exactly what what you've had one or two. I believe you've only had you've had one. You had one at eight oh six eighty five. I mean, major resistance uh, starting at eight oh five forty five. That was yesterday's high, um, up to the all time high at eight oh eight ninety seven. Uh, what I've been looking at, I won't be trying to be take, picking the top in this stock for once. Instead, I would look at the last two days lows at 791.22 and 791.79. That's major support. I would let it run up on the upside. Uh, but if it cracked the 790 level, I think it'd be time to look for an exit.
Facebook too yesterday I had a horrible day. Uh, I was down almost a buck. 27.28 is where it actually uh, closed right near the lows actually too. If you bring up that Facebook chart from yesterday, closed near the lows, closing week. This stock's found major resistance up here in the 29 area and finally just said fooey on it and they turned around and beat the crap out of it yesterday. It is lifting again today, 27.65, but things starts getting up into the 28. So I think you're going to find resistance here too. So this is starting when you look at these individual charts, just to sit back and look at it. We were saying, you know, we're probably going to, you know, find some support in 1494, 1490. We found it at 1495. So we did find it there yesterday, which is a good thing. But when you start looking, maybe it was just a dead cap bounce here yesterday. Because uh, when I'm looking at these charts, a lot of them are not looking that great. The individual uh, ones. Yeah, Facebook's been under pressure since its, uh, its earning release. Uh, it has come down quite a bit. Uh, got a key level, 2710 was low on February 12th. Um, hit 2715 uh, yesterday. So that's going to be an area of support. Uh, getting a little bounce here in the pre market. I would just like to see where the St. Drifts up. 2773 uh, has been high in the pre market. Uh, so let's keep an eye on that. Uh, really not a lot to look at, you know, above that level besides 28 uh, being a nice, you know, round number. You really don't have a major resistance of up until you get uh, maybe to the 28.55 yet handle, which was yesterday's high. Uh, overall market thoughts here then. So let's like I was saying, I think you're bounced here. You're at 1508.75. We've got a nice bounce off the 1494, 1495. But I think on some individual issues, you're going to have some people starting to get nervous here. Um, so I'm somewhat nervous here too, just from an overall perspective. I think if I caught the 13 or 14 point bounce here yesterday, I'd probably be pretty happy and lightening up. Um, obviously, we get back up to the 1520 area, then you got a resistance all over. But you know, can people start here? I don't know if we're too early. Well, to start short or not? Well, whole day of selling yesterday. The bounce off, we're right back up to yesterday's high. Uh, I've got a tick above it in the pre market at 1509.75. I mean, you're opening up in the major resistance, but as this market has done on so many occasions, it's opened up in the resistance and then just kept on going. But uh, we'll see if today is going to be any different. Uh, above the 1509 area, our 50% retracement of the uh, of the break's been fifteen twelve fifty. That's our We're show. The regular oh, that's our show for today, folks. So have a great weekend, great trading day. Back with you guys on Monday.